Hello, this is Lord's Legion, and welcome to a brand new countdown. And yeah, it's been ages since I last done a concept off countdown, but yeah, here, here's one now. Here's one now. Of course, this one being about the characters with better designs than their final designs. Because as we all know about concept art, most times out of 10, whenever they do have some kick ass concept designs, they often get scrapped in favor of inferior designs for the final product. Which is why I want to take a good step back and just look at some of the really cool designs that they unfortunately had to scrap for one reason or another. And before anyone moans in the comments, yes, I know I did kind of break the promise of not following the poll, which I am. The next one's going to be the MCU Volume 2 one, which I do believe is still the one on top. I am still working on that one as we speak, hence why this is only a top 10, and I'm just going to do it from the top of my head, and why not? Here it is, without further ado, let's begin with the countdown. So storming off the list at number 10 we have Fairy Metal Godzilla from Godzilla 2014. People keep begging for me to talk about Godzilla some more despite the fact that I don't really care about the franchise so enjoy this one while it lasts. But yeah looking at this design for Godzilla he's clearly got more of this metallic aesthetic going on and he doesn't even look that much like a monster he just looks more like this metal crystal Whatever the hell he's supposed to be. I mean, clearly he must be somewhat inspired by Mechagodzilla because of all the metal and spikes and everything. Like, he, I think he even has the orange eyes that kind of glow. And honestly, if they went with that design instead of the final product, I think this one would have been much scarier to see in live action. Because, you know, he looks so much taller, so much pointier, so much spikier, and so much metalier, if that's even a word. So rolling on into number 9, we have Darth Prime from Transformers, and honestly, I don't care if they ripped off Star Wars or not, but if you're gonna rip off anything, you may as well rip off from the best that is Star Wars, and you know, this is clearly the best design Optimus Prime has ever had, I mean sure it looks nothing like how we're used to, but if you ask me, I would pick this design in a heartbeat because he just looks like Darth Vader and he looks so fucking cool. I mean, if only they turned the whole design black and grey and maybe give him the red eyes, then that would be spot on and that would just make the design all the better. And as much as people would say that this ain't their Optimus Prime, I don't even care what they say because this design of Optimus Prime is clearly the best. And that's pretty much the reason why the Bayformers movies kind of suck is because they didn't go with these designs. I mean, fuck the Bayformers movies, but you know, I I'll agree, Bumblebee is a really great movie. No, no sarcasm, I actually really love Bumblebee. So, uh, oh, oh, it's number eight. So number eight, we have the Alien Rangers from the Power Rangers 20... 14? 2017? I don't even know. I mean, to be fair, no one has seen the movie, so can you really blame me? I mean, when you ever look at a Power Ranger in any of the live-action incarnations, whether it be from the movies or the TV shows or anything like that, they always resemble aliens with their goofy visors and their dumb massive helmets, so at least they were trying to go all out with this movie initially, with bodies that just kind of look off in terms of proportion with the arms and the body and pretty much everything. And I'm just gonna say this right now, but if they went with these designs instead of the final designs that they used for this movie, then that could have been a billion property, I swear to god. It would have made over a billion. It probably would have even beat Avatar or something. Okay, and so the seventh one will go for the Teenage Mutant Alien Turtles from the Teenage Mutant Al I mean Ninja Turtles from 2014. That's right, I think Power Rangers was from 2017. Anyway, like these designs just look so alien, so unique, so whatever the hell. And they just look as incredibly weird and as wacky as the original incarnations from the comics and the animated shows and the movies and all that good stuff. And I know that many diehard fans will attack this design for the Ninja Turtles, even though the Ninja Turtles are pretty stupid and ridiculous to begin with in terms of concept, even you can't deny that. Although I am willing to admit that they should at the very least do something to make them distinguishable. Which is why I should suggest them just wearing some sort of cloth around their crotch just to cover their dicks. Like we have the blue one for Leo and the red one for Raph and so on and so forth. So up to number 6, number 6, we have Mad Evil Loki from 4. Now us diehard fans over at Marvel will admit that Tom Hiddleston's Loki is too much of a sap and he's not evil enough, which is why they should have went with this design instead and took him in the more dark and sinister approach. 
I'm sure many people are probably going to be like, oh, he just looks like an evil Joker, but with magic powers, but... Like I previously said, if you're gonna steal from anything, you may as well steal from the best, and why not steal from the Joker? Like, he's pretty much the best villain ever created, and the reason why Loki kind of falls flat on his face is because they didn't use this design. Like, his whole memo is supposed to be the god of chaos, so why not let him embody that and make him do some shit, or make him even do some animals like how he does in the comics? I mean, surely I'm not the only one who kind of wants to see that. Okay, so the next one we got the edgier Joker from Suicide Squad and for you guys who keep complaining about all of the tattoos that the Joker had, yes, I fully back you because they could have gone all out but instead they didn't know whether to go all out or just don't do them at all. And plus, I do admit that the whole damaged tattoo on his forehead was so fucking dumb, but why couldn't you instead just have the Joker tattoo an entire smiley face with sharp teeth. I mean, that, that just screams the Joker to me. It makes so much more sense than just cutting off your own mouth and making your own smiley because, like, that, that's just nasty. You'll get so much infections. Why, why not just do tattoos around your face and then you can just have your own smiley there? I, I mean, it's just as permanent. And I think that's the main reason why Jared Leto wasn't as enthusiastic into being the Joker was because, you know, he, he wasn't allowed to have this tattooed on his face. Okay, so we have the creepy Woody from Toy Story 4, I think. No, it's the first one even. It wouldn't make any goddamn sense if he had a different design within the sequel. But you know, I think that aside, it is a pretty bizarre design for Woody, but at the same time, it kind of makes him look more iconic. It reminds me a lot more like one of those 90s creepy dolls, which is something that I used to collect all the time. If you ask me, he kind of looks like Chucky's dad or something. Like, I, I can totally imagine him being Chucky's dad. But of course, what do you expect? It's Pixar and Disney and they don't want to do risks with more horror aspects for their films because, you know, they have to be family friendly, PG clean and stuff like that. And apparently they don't want to scare kids too much because at the end of the day, they're meant to be, you know, squeaky clean, squeaky clean, squeaky clean. So swinging into the bronze medal, we have the crazy Spidey from The Amazing Spider-Man 1. It annoys me to no end that people always say that The Amazing Spider-Man 2's costume as well as the Spider-Man Homecoming suit are considered to be the very best Spider-Man costumes, but really, they don't even compare to this masterpiece of a costume because the, the, the complications is so unreal. It, it, screams Spider-Man to me, I mean, it's got the reds, it's got the blues, it's got the lenses, it's got the web shooters, uh, but you know, they have the web tatters and you know, it has this unique pattern that has never been seen in any of the other Spider-Man costumes, which is why it's so unique to me and why they didn't go for that one is beyond me because it could have so worked within the more gritty take on the Spider-Man mythos that they were trying so hard to preach. And no wonder people hate the final costume that they went with for the Amazing Spider-Man one because that one was his trash. And forcing their way to the silver plaque, we have Yoda the Gnome for Star Wars Episode 5, the Empire Strikes Back one. I remember back then when people used to moan about this movie because Empire was too dark in comparison to the original and how people hated the twists and turns so it kind of reminds me a lot like The Last Jedi even though The Last Jedi is actually pretty well made. But I mean what would they expect them with the fact that they thought Empire was too dark? I mean they could have just used this design for Yoda and it would have brightened up every scenery with his very precious red hat. I mean, it's not like the final design that they used for Yoda was really remotely iconic. I mean, if they went with that one, I think everyone and their mums would know exactly who this version of Yoda would be. And finally, taking the top spot and going on top of me, we have the human-predator hybrid female bitch from the Predator movie. There is a clear reason on as to why people don't like the Predator movie that came out last year, and that's because it lacked female predators. And you know how Hollywood is like these days with feminism and their agendas to promote females and, you know, strengthen them. But you know, this design for the female predator human hybrid thing just looks 
Incredibly sexy to me. I would totally give it a cheeky little peck so long as it puts a bag over its head, or more accurately, one of the fancy, fancy masks. And because of the sheer sex appeal that this design has, this is why this is the number one for me. But what is your personal favourite designs that they could have used for the final product, but for some reason they just scrapped completely because they're idiots? Comment below and share some thoughts, and as always, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, take care, have a good one.